All right, what is going on today, everybody? It is a somewhat decent day out. It's a little cloudy, but we're gonna be out here filming anyways. I'm super stoked to be bringing you another video for new photographers. This one is gonna cover something that all new photographers struggle with. We're gonna be talking about blurry photos and how to get rid of them. I'm Matt Johnson. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to get rid of blurry photos forever. Do I hit everything? Yeah, here oh we go. Oh my gosh, I got it in one take, Forgot, sort of. Here we go. Ah, here we go. Quick shout out to all the high school yearbook teachers out there. You guys have a crazy hard job. This video was requested by you. And while I'm making it for all new photographers, this one is especially for all my high school yearbook teacher peeps out there. We got tons of stuff to cover today. So let's quit screwing around and get down to business. Let's start by fixing the easiest thing there is to fix, and that's that your photos actually aren't blurry. If you've ever been looking through your camera and everything looks blurry, like the numbers at the bottom, you actually need to adjust what's called your dioptric adjustment knob. Dioptric adjustment knob? I think that's right. You guys remember that? No. I think it's right. I think so. <laughs> and most cameras, that's on the back by the viewfinder, which is the little hole that you look through when you're taking pictures. And it's either a little slider at the bottom or a little wheel on the side. And what I want you to do is just be looking through the camera and move that little slider or turn that little wheel. And you'll see that everything that's inside of the camera, inside that viewfinder will come in focus. So another super easy thing we can do to eliminate blurry photos is make sure we're holding the camera still when we're taking photos. I put this huge lens on this camera so I could demonstrate to you how to hold the camera still. I'm gonna make sure I put my right hand right here on the grip and I really want my left hand underneath this lens to help support it and help hold it still. I see a lot of new photographers who hold the camera like this and that's fine if you're using a little tiny lens but on a great big lens like this bad boy, you gotta have this hand out here to help support it. And then I'm gonna keep my elbows tucked in I'm gonna put this camera right up against my face and I'm really gonna focus on holding the camera still when I'm taking photos. Even better, if you can, use a tripod or a monopod and I'll put links to the ones I use down in the description below. You can check those out. All right, there are two different kinds of blurry photos. There is out of focus and then there is motion blur. And both of these happen all the time to new photographers. Let's start with that out of focus one and talk about how to fix that problem so it doesn't happen to you. All right, you guys, let's talk about autofocus. You really need to be paying attention to what your camera is focusing on and making sure it's focusing on the right thing. I see new photographers doing this all the time where they think they're taking a picture where their subject is in focus, but what they've actually done is focused on the background. When your camera auto focuses, it's gonna flash a little box or blink a little light over what it's trying to focus on. Let me show you what that looks like. So notice how as I walk into this photograph here, the camera senses my face, it picks up on it, and that little box appears over my face. That right there is a sign that the camera is focused on me and no longer focused on the trees behind me. All right, so here we are looking through the camera and notice that little black box on the screen. That's where the camera's trying to focus. But again, I want the water fountain in focus. So what do we do? Well, every camera has a little button you can press where you can tell the camera that you wanna move that box around. So I'm gonna press that button here. That's gonna allow me to come in and choose the box that I want the camera to focus on. And I'm gonna choose that one because that's right over the part of the water fountain that I want to be in focus. And see how now that black box is right there and I'm getting that thing in focus. So on this camera, the button I pressed to be able to move the focus box around was this one right here. And then once I pressed that button, this is what I was seeing through the camera as well. Then I just used this D-pad over here on the back of the camera to move this around. If you can't figure out how to switch the focus box and the camera, you just can't get the camera to focus where you want to. You can always just move the camera like that so that the focus box that the camera is choosing is over your subject. I've had to do that many a time in order to get my subject to be in focus. All right, once you are sure your subject is in focus, there's a few other autofocus settings I want you to check really quick. The first one is called AFC or AI Servo if you're on Canon cameras, which is a ridiculous name. And this is for if your subjects are moving. And I don't mean like moving like this, I mean like moving closer or farther away from you. This is basically the autofocus is gonna try to track your moving subject. So if you're photographing sports or something where people are moving around a lot, set your camera to AI Servo or AFC. The other one is if your subject is holding still. So like if I'm just gonna stand right here and not move, I might be moving my arms around. Then we wanna use what's called one shot on Canon cameras or AFS on most cameras. And the last one is AFA or AI Focus on Canon cameras. And this is where the camera tries to guess which autofocus mode it should use. This used to be pretty crappy and I never used it, although I'm not gonna lie to you, it has gotten better in the last couple years, but I still don't quite trust it. So I'm always either on AFS or AFC. This is a great example of when we would use one shot. You can see for the shot that I'm trying to get, the distance between me and my subject is not changing at all. So my subject is moving, that doesn't matter, 
What matters is that the distance between us is not changing. So one shot is totally gonna work fine here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this little shutter release button halfway down, and you can see when I do that, see those green boxes appear on the screen? That's the camera telling me where it's focusing. So I know it's focusing on my subject, it's getting the subject in focus. And now all I gotta do is press the button the rest of the way down, and I get that shot right there, and it looks really nice. One other thing you need to know about one shot is that, notice how once I focus on this thing, if I move the camera closer, see how the focus changes? It's no longer in focus. When the distance between your camera and your subject changes, you have to refocus when you're using one shot. So since I need to refocus here, I'll just press the button halfway down again, watch to see where the boxes show up that shows me what's in focus. And then I'll just press the shutter the release the rest of the way down to get a nice sharp photo. So now I wanna show you what happens when we're shooting in one shot and we're shooting moving subjects. I got my dog Luna down there and I'm gonna have her run towards me. I'm also gonna set my drive to continuous, meaning I'm gonna tell the camera that as long as I'm holding down this button to keep taking photos. So as long as I'm holding that shutter release down, I'm gonna keep taking photos. So let's try this on one shot and see how it turns out. All right, so to change that drive on this camera, I'm gonna press this button right here, or I could press the Q button to change the camera settings. And I wanna come into the drive right there and change it from single shooting to continuous shooting. All right, Luna, come here. So my dog clearly doesn't photograph very well, but notice how in that first photo she is in focus, but by the time she gets close to the camera, she's blurry. And that's what happens with one shot. I never gave the camera a chance to refocus because I was shooting so quickly. And so as she came closer, she got more and more out of focus. Let's try that again, but this time we're gonna switch to AI servo instead of one shot and see how it looks. So again, I'm gonna come in here and press this AF button, or you could also press Q and go into change your settings. I'm gonna press that. And this time we're gonna try AI servo and see how that looks. Luna, come on. Well, she's still not very photogenic, but notice how in this first photo she's in focus, and then by the time she gets close to the camera, she's still in focus. Even though I was holding the shutter release down the entire time, camera was tracking her and keeping her in focus, and that's what AI Servo does. All right, we're gonna head over to a new spot and talk about the next thing we can do to make sure we're not getting any more blurry photos. Let's talk about motion blur. This is a little bit harder one to fix than autofocus because there's a lot of settings involved here. The problem is if you're getting motion blur is that your shutter speed is too slow. And if you don't know what shutter speed is, that's totally fine. I'm gonna show you here in this video right now today, so don't even worry about it. And if your shutter speed is too slow, you're either gonna get camera shake or motion blur. Camera shake looks like this, and that means we weren't holding the camera still enough. And motion blur looks like this, and that means our action was moving too quick for our camera to be able to capture. For the rest of this video, I'm just gonna refer to both of those things as motion blur. And I'm gonna show you right now how to make sure that motion blur never happens to you again, ever. So the best way to get rid of motion blur is to find more light. Easier said than done, right? But if I have the choice to photograph, let's say like a basketball game, either outside, even on a cloudy day like today, or in a gym, I'm always gonna choose to shoot outside because there's more light outside. And the more light there is, the faster our shutter speed can be. And the faster our shutter speed is, the less motion blur we're gonna get. But we don't always have that option, do we? Sometimes we just have to photograph a football game at night or in a dark stadium. So what do we do when we can't control the light like that? The easy fix, you guys, if we can't control the light, if we can't just magically make things brighter, I wish we could, is to use what's called sports mode on your camera. Sports mode is awesome. It's super versatile. You can use it almost anywhere, but there's one huge problem with it, and that's that sports mode takes away all control. The camera makes all the decisions for us, and it doesn't let us override anything. So sports mode is great if you just want to go out and shoot and not think at all, but what we actually want to use is called shutter priority. Setting your camera to sports mode is gonna be different on every camera, obviously. On this camera, sports mode is that little dude running right there. On some cameras, you'll set it to scene, and then on the back of your camera, you'll change it to sports mode. Shutter priority means that we get to choose what shutter speed to use. We don't let the camera decide for us, so we can decide what shutter speed do we need for what we're gonna be photographing. Let me show you how to figure that out and how to set that up. So to get our camera at shutter priority, what we wanna do is take this mode dial right here, and we wanna turn that to TV or S. All right, the next thing we wanna do is set our ISO to auto. So I'm gonna come here on the back of the camera. I'm gonna press this Q button right here for this camera to come over here and change the ISO from 200 to auto. Once we have our ISO on auto, we wanna change this number right here. This is our shutter speed. Right now, this one is set to one over 1,000. I can change this to different numbers. On this camera, I change the shutter speed by turning this wheel right here. It'll probably be different on your camera. You can check the user manual to figure that out. So how do you know what shutter speed to use? That's the million dollar question for this video, and I'm gonna tell you right now. What you wanna do is you wanna set your shutter speed to one over your focal length. Your focal length is the size of your lens. For example, the focal length on this camera that's filming me right now, that's a 30 millimeter lens. So if I was just getting started, I would set my shutter speed to one over 30. 
Now this right here, this is a zoom lens. This zooms from 18 to 135. So on this lens, I would set my shutter speed to one over 125 because 125 is the closest shutter speed to 135. And when you're using a zoom lens, you always wanna set the shutter speed to the higher number on your zoom. So I'm gonna take this shot of my daughter, Sophie, right here. I've got my shutter speed set to one over 125 because that's what works for this lens right here. And I changed my autofocus to one shot because she's not moving and I'm not moving. So the distance between us is not changing. So that's gonna work perfect here. So let's see a big smile there, Self. And that turned out really nice, you guys. No motion blur, no camera shake on that one. Great photo. And that shutter speed worked perfect because it matched my focal length and my subject wasn't moving. So for this next shot, we're gonna take the same thing, only now we're gonna add motion. We're gonna have her run towards me. Now, whenever you add motion, you need to use a faster shutter speed. So how do you know what shutter speed to use? Well, what I want you to do is I want you to take your one over your focal length, remember that number, and I want you to double it. So for this lens, remember I set my shutter speed to one over 125. Now I'm gonna change it to one over 250. And that should be fast enough to freeze this motion. I'm also gonna make two other changes because the distance between me and her is gonna be changing. I'm gonna change my autofocus to AI servo on this Canon camera. And I'm also gonna change my drive to continuous. Okay, go ahead, self. Perfect. Oh, that looks great, you guys. We got her in focus in almost every shot. We were able to freeze the action in almost every single shot and that shutter speed of one over 250 worked awesome. So the whole figuring out the shutter speed by doing one over the focal length and then doubling it for things that are moving, you guys, that's just a starting point. You may still get motion blur or camera shake at that shutter speed, even if you doubled it. Don't be afraid to raise it up a little bit more if you need to, but don't go any higher than you have to. For example, this camera right here, it will go to one over 4,000. I wouldn't recommend you shoot at that shutter speed unless it's really, really bright and you're photographing something that's moving really, really quickly, like a race car going 200 miles per hour or something like that. Honestly, if you want a little hashtag real talk, because I'll give it to you, one over 250 to one over 500 is going to work for most of the things that you'll be photographing. Photographing. So if all else fails, choose one of those two shutter speeds and you'll be good to go. One more thing we can do to eliminate motion blur, but this one's gonna be expensive. This thing is a 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. It's an absolute beast of a lens, but it's expensive. It costs about 1200 bucks. I'll put an Amazon link in the description below if you wanna pick one up because look how amazing the photos this thing takes are. So because this lens zooms from 70 all the way to 200, I'm gonna raise my shutter speed up to one over 400 and check these photos out. Oh my gosh, those photos are so awesome. This lens is so sharp, it's so fast, it's so good at freezing motion and making sure photos aren't blurry. I love the looks of these photos and you can't get that without a big beastly lens like this bad boy. Oh my goodness, you guys, we did it. We learned how to eliminate blurry photos. We made it all the way to the end. That was a ton of information. If you need to, you might wanna go back and watch this whole thing again or hang tight, because I'm gonna do a 30 second review for you right now. Here we go, if you wanna eliminate blurry photos forever, here's what you need to do. Check your dioptric adjustment knob, hold the camera as still as possible, pay attention to what your camera is focusing on. If you're photographing things that are moving, use AI servo or AFC. If you're photographing things that are holding still, use one shot or AFS. Motion blur is caused by using a shutter speed that is too slow. The brighter it is out, the easier it is to eliminate motion blur. Put your camera on sports mode or use the following settings on your camera. Mode dial on shutter priority, ISO on auto, set your shutter speed to one over your focal length, double that if you're shooting things that are moving, and that's just a starting point. One over 250 to one over 500 should be fine for most things, but if you need to go higher, do it. Just don't go any higher than you absolutely have to, and if you can afford it, buy a big, fancy, expensive lens. Oh my goodness, you guys, we made it to the end. That was so much information. I had an absolute blast making this video for all new photographers, and especially for my high school yearbook teacher friends. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Hopefully you learned some good stuff. If you did, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will try my best to answer them and help you out. And if you have any other suggestions for videos like this one that you'd like to learn about, leave a comment as well about that, and I'll try my best to make that happen. Have a good one, everybody.